Hello, Kristen. How are you doing back there? I'm doing just great, Frank. Could you talk to us a little bit about why it's important for educators to be at COP? Well, look, I mean, this is, this is an incredibly important place for educators to be. Uh, back in 1992, when the, the treaty was established and the, the, the countries, over 190 countries signed the treaty, Article 6 clearly stated that education, training, and public access were critical pieces of the climate agenda. Uh, progress would not be made without that. And there's no way that education, training, and public access could be achieved without educators being central to that practice. Uh, and for the longest time, we've kind of said this was important, but I don't think until this COP, COP 21, which is kind of staggering to think about that we've had 21 of these, uh, and you know the previous 20 have kind of alluded to, got to, so I think it's really appropriate that you guys are here with us today and, th and for the rest of this uh, time. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to be with you tomorrow. I wanted to, but I need to get home. <laughs> but I think that, that having you here to really understand all the aspects of what it takes to do the climate agenda. And then just another piece, um, Kristen and some of us were, were in a roundtable discussion back in February. And Craig Johnson, one of your colleagues, was, was there as well. And one of the things we talked about in one of the roundtables on educators was the role of all educators, not just science educators, but all educators being central to climate education. Uh, the issue tr spans across uh, science, social studies, arts, English, history, the whole thing, all education, formal, informal. So. Um, I think, you know, unfortunately we weren't able to be here today uh, for the Education Day, but I think, you know, picking up and really looking at the richness of what's here uh, and, uh, and then exploring how to bring that back across the curriculum and across all forms of education is really a challenge for all of us. So you guys being here is a critical piece of that new, that new wave of exploration, how we actually do what Article 6 called for back in 1992. Thanks. Uh, Frank, tell us, what do you think, what's one thing you think that we should do, that the teachers should do while they're here in Paris? Mm. One thing you should do while you're here in Paris. Well, there's a little cafe right across <laughs> the street from Notre Dame that's got some really awesome coffee uh, um, and some the best uh, croissant in Paris. So I highly recommend you check that one out. Uh, I'll have to find the address. It's, uh, it's um, wow, really good stuff. Had it this morning, so don't forget about that part of Paris. Um, but I mean, in all seriousness, uh, I think the one thing you should definitely do, now you're going to be outside the blue zone, which is where the, the delegations and the, the, the negotiations are happening, most of you. Two of you will be there, right? Mm -hmm. So I think I would answer it two ways. One is for those who are able to go into the blue zone. I think that I would highly encourage you to really take the most you can get out of both the civil society side and the, the national uh, centers and really explore the richness of how countries are moving forward uh, on this. Um, a lot of the U.S. side events, I would encourage you strongly to go to the side events. The, if you go to state.gov slash U.S. Center, you'll be able to find the um, the specific events and side events uh, and, and go to them. Uh, you might be able to spend some time with Secretary Moniz from Energy or uh, you know, some of the other high-level um, you know, parts of the U.S. government or some of the other partners that we have under the President's Climate Action Plan. So please, go there, explore that. In the green zone, which is about civil society and go and explore other partnerships, explore how others are doing this. There's a really diversity of ways education and public engagement works in this country. I would think, you know, you know this is an, a, a rich opportunity to really see for the first time something new that you didn't think you saw before. Uh, I am in having that experience with youth engagement. I'm really seeing the value and the diversity and the appropriate aspect of youth engagement. In the last event, a young man from the youth director for Earth Guardians challenged education to go further, 
And one of the things he said that really struck a chord with me as I've been exploring youth engagement in the U.S. is to empower and, and engage youth directly in their education in, in meaning and significance and empowering them because they hear the issues and yet you know it shatters their world sometimes and yet they don't know how to move forward powerfully in spite of uh, the, the overwhelmingness of this topic. And I think that you know we as educators you know and I was a former classroom teacher like you for a very long time loved it and, and want to go back as quickly as I can but unfortunately it's not anytime soon. Um, I think that you know all of us teachers we love our students and we love working with them and I think that we have to uh, and, you know hear what they're saying in this space. They really want to be powerful here. They don't want to wait until they're decision makers in 20, 30 years. They want to be leaders right now. And um, so that's what I'm taking away as a personal thing that I'm seeing different um, in the way I implement education and conduct education. So, you know, that's, that's something that I found. I hope all of you find something like that that really challenges you in a new way. That's what I would like. And could you say um, your name and what your title and what you do is? Sure. So I have that on. Uh, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> this is funny uh, because in the government, you, 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 it's almost you feel like you're a knight. You know, at the beginning of like, you know, jousting things, they'd say the Duke of this and the this and this and this and this and this and this and just goes on and on and on. So technically, I, I am the, my name is Frank Niebold. I'm the Climate Education Coordinator for the Climate Program Office at NOAA. I am the Climate Education Lead for NOAA. I am the U.S. Global Change Research Program Education Interagency Working Group Chair. And I'm also the Article 6 Reporting Lead for the, under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. There is a reporting requirement that every four years we write a climate action report. Different than the President's Climate Action Plan, but the report every four years. You can look at the last two, and there's a chapter in there on education, training, and public access. I'm the person who manages the writing of that chapter, and so the next one will be coming out in, um, in January of 2018. So the work we're doing right now, the work you're doing right here, actually will be reported to the world through Chapter 9 of the next Climate Action Report. And I can assure you that that will happen because, well, one, uh, you're doing awesome work, and two, it's part of the President's Climate uh, Action Plan through the uh, education, uh, climate education and literacy initiative, which we co-designed with OSTP uh, back uh, last February. We launched, uh, you know, and actually previous last February, the 14th, February 14th. So, you know, that's that's who I am. Um, but let's just remember, you know, when you're a teacher, you're always a teacher. I taught long enough to be a teacher, a true teacher in my mind, is, you know, and uh, so that's why I'm here, um, and that's what I do. But you know, I'm also a rich partner maker, and that's why I love working with Climate Generation and all the people you guys work with. So you guys are awesome. Uh, you got some great leadership working with you. The fact that they got you here is uh, is, is great. It's really really important. And uh, so you know, but one thing I ask of you is when you're done. Uh, please work with Climate Generation to write a report of what you did and submit it to uh, OSTP, the White House, and write a blog on everything you've done here to keep the momentum for this initiative uh, because you know we're going to be going full speed on climate education in the United States as long as we can. We need to make it so much progress and have so much going that we're able to just launch for the next decade. That's what I'm taking away from right here is, is we just completed a decade of climate education, now what's the next decade? And that's for us to co-design. So thank, thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.